We have a secret weapon. We have our secret weapon. I'm ready for the secret weapon. I know that this is a thing. Take it in. We are just now realizing Grenada is not going to happen. You'll find what you've got. These are the tales of Boab. We're getting really close to our neighbor right now. First cast. Are you kidding me? First cast. Oh my god. Holy sh I've been attempting to hone my fishing skills. Here, I actually had something on the line, and I started fumbling with the GoPro, and, and it got off the hook right by the boat. Not what I was hoping to catch. Crab got him. Ripped him apart. <laughs> yes, yes. Michael was out here doing a thankless job, and she was on the um, fence of losing her cool, I think. And so she had this great idea. She said, maybe I just need to get sprayed off. But what are you doing out here? Yeah, I had to spray myself off first of all. I was cleaning up the cockpit, which I hate the teak in our cockpit because it makes it so difficult to clean. That's a side note. The main point is that we're cleaning out the locker so we can get in the locker and we can show you guys our entire exhaust system. We're putting our engine together and our hope is that in this episode it will be completely together and we'll have attempted to start it and then We'll know a lot more after that. So hold on to your buns. We have a secret weapon. We do have a secret weapon. And, and if you've been following us, the secret weapon is gonna allow us to use a 90 degree elbow. We have been wrapping our heads around this problem, trying to figure out how to do this right. Because if we Without do it, pickling our engine, right? Right, we don't wanna pickle the engine. Before we show you our secret weapon, we're gonna go through our entire raw water circuit and exhaust system. First, the water comes into the boat from the through hole, open the seacock. It goes right directly into a water strainer, and that's easy to pull out and clean. From the water strainer, it actually goes through this hose, and it goes through our transmission. We have an interesting design there. And it comes out over here, and then here's our impeller, so this is what's drawing all the water in from the sea, moving it through the system, comes up to here, and here's an important part. This is our vented loop. So this here, the vented loop, as far as we can tell, it doesn't matter whether the vented loop is before the engine or after the engine, and what it does is it helps to prevent siphoning. So we were really nervous, because we hear when the engine cools down, it can siphon water back into the exhaust. We're confident that the vented loop that was already in place is going to be just fine to help prevent the siphoning. So from this vented loop, we go in right here directly into the heat exchanger. Now from there, it goes out of the heat exchanger into our 90 degree elbow and then into the water lock muffler. So you see we come out of the water lock muffler and it goes into this fiberglass hose that goes straight up, I'd say about at least a foot above the water line. Water line is somewhere about here. So, from there. Okay, so I believe this is called a gooseneck. So it goes through the bulkhead and it goes up even higher. So that's clearly well above the water line. Comes here and it drops down. And from there, it has another little muffler before it finally exits the boat. So, you can see in following seas, it's going to have to force the water into that exhaust up above here, down, uh, it, it, seems, it seems difficult, but still something that we want to be cautious of. And as far as we can tell, the back flowing of the salt water is only an issue in following seas. But we have our secret weapon. Are you ready for the secret weapon? I'm ready for the secret weapon. The old flapper valve from our toilet. We figured we could just secure something on the back of the boat 
that would allow the exhaust and air to come out. I don't know which direction. It would probably be like this. So exhaust, air can go out and then following seas just hit that and they can't get into the boat. Um, and Joel put this against our exhaust outlet and it actually covers it perfectly. So we were thinking that we can just get, you know, a screw with some 4200, a big washer, and screw that on there. I know that this is a thing. You can put flappers on the end of exhaust. Ready for fasteners? Yeah. You missed the stressful cursing part because four hands were required to get this thing lined up. But we got it and we're working on getting the bolts in right now. Let's go, baby. She's looking pretty good. Yeah. This is the going to be installing the elbow take two. We had to remove all the hardware because you gotta get this boot on the elbow first and we were having a hell of a time trying to get it on so had to just undo everything we did and redo it and that's pretty standard i think take two was a success we'll find out you know moving forward but now i think it's time for the heat exchanger so michael's finishing up with the hose clamps we got the elbow back on but this time El Bute is on positioned El Bute. secured ah michael Yo. How are you holding up so far? I'm getting a little sore, but I'm doing okay. Morale is still strong. Well, this is a little bit uh, sad. Doing our thing and we noticed there's oil. It seems like oil. And then when we took a closer look, it was definitely oil. And we checked our oil level and we're completely low. We're done, drained. So the oil completely drained out of the engine. And now we're wondering, do we keep moving forward with this or do we now try to figure out why all the oil is out of the engine? Cause that's, that's extra. And I mean, my vote, Michael will weigh in here. My vote is let's just keep moving forward and let's try to complete this system. And then we can move to what what's causing the oil to leak out of the engine instead of maybe putting a stop to all of this and then trying to trace the oil leak down. Michael, what do you think? I want to address the oil issue assuming it might be something easy and quick to fix, but if it's not, I think Joel's right. We just finish what if we're doing. If it's not, we're smoked. This is that moment right now, you guys. So take it in. We are just now realizing Grenada is not going to happen. Yeah. It's just one extra thing that was unforeseen and we're... So basically what happened is the bill just full of oil and we've been cleaning on the engine a lot and we just kind of assumed that most of that dirt was just dirt coming from the engine old paint um, but it's it's clear now that it's just a lot of oil in the bilge and there's no visible oil leaks anywhere near the filter the drain plug for the oil pan is securely in place but when we took a mirror and started looking at the bottom of our oil pan, it's very rusty. We're, we're pretty sure it's the oil pan that's leaking. We've just felt around. We can only see like fresh oil at, on the bottom of the engine. But man, it really seems like that was a knockout punch right there. You said, son, when you grow up, you'll be fine. I know you've got questions on We've talked to our friends, we've talked to Michael's dad and sister Erin. AKA Diesel Doug. The Diesel master. Doug. Um, so basically we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and put the heat exchanger back in, keep on with what we were working on, and then that that's going to allow us to be able to start up the engine. And I think that it does seem like starting up the engine will make sense to help us locate this, this oil leak because 
we're not seeing it. We don't know where the oil is coming out of. Yeah. My dad made a pretty um, interesting point, nothing that we'd thought of or researched, that when you take off the old oil filter, that O-ring in there sometimes can get stuck to, like in our case, the oil filter just screws right onto the engine block. So that O-ring could be stuck in there. And then if you put on a new filter with a new O-ring, then you have two O-rings up against one another and that's not going to seal it up. But that would only really leak a lot when the engine's running. So. Cleaned it up and then we just put a quart of oil in and we're just watching it. And we're not seeing anything coming out of the oil pan, and or are we seeing oil at all coming from anywhere? All right, so that's telling us the holes at the top, and then Michael is gonna have to put the camera down because I'm gonna have to hold it right about here, and then we tighten up the the back hose clamps. We just got the engine pretty much it's assembled, it's ready to go. So here's the plan. Um, we're gonna wake up in the morning, fill it up with fresh water, and then just try to start it up. But what that leaves us time to do is to watch for the oil. We put a, a quart of oil in. So when we wake up, first thing is just to look in the bilge. I haven't told Michael this plan yet, so. Sounds good so far. We're cleaning out the bilges, all the oil, water, debris, everything. That way it's going to be more obvious if we get an oil leak. So something very interesting has happened overnight. We topped it off with oil. And let's show you the dipstick here. This is, this is interesting. Yesterday, we thought it was game over. Thought we rested through somehow the oil pan. We had no oil in it, but now it hasn't gone down. You can It's hard to see because we haven't run the engine yet, but we're, we're about to. But it's about right here, the oil level. So right in the middle, a little bit on the high side, has not gone down at all. As far as I know, can you think of anything else we need to do, Michael? I think this is it. You mean we just open that seacock and turn the key and see what happens? Open a seacock, great call, yes. Yeah, we gotta do that, it's still shut. I, th and I think that's the last thing on the checklist. The only thing left to do now is to turn the key and just see what happens. The oil is not leaking out so far, so we're gonna be watching that filter. Dave West, patron of ours, our wizard, thank you so much for this GoPro accessory. We have it stuck right here in front of the engine, so it's gonna capture all the action. You guys are going to see whatever happens on the very first turn. We're really nervous. Super excited. Let's go, baby. Would you say that was like the most apart we've ever had this engine? Definitely. Definitely. Definitely the most pieces we've ever broken into. So this is going to be pretty interesting, guys. Plus we we're expecting oil to come spraying out of somewhere. Yeah. Um, but I mean the cooling system or is water gonna start oozing from somewhere? I don't know. This is just <sighs> All we can do is turn the key Yep, let's put it so on. Let's uh, turn let's the put key. Put it on battery All right. Nothing. Okay, I guess that probably means that our alternator connections are not correct Don't you think so babe? Focus. Boab! Lola dipped. How come you're so quiet?